Hey guys, this is Mitch with Fine Point CGI, and today we're going to talk about the different languages that are available inside of Godot. Now, I know we already did this, I want to say a month or two ago, but some things have changed. I've done some other languages that you guys have suggested, and I thought I would include them in our benchmark testing just to see what other languages are available and, you know, how they perform compared to each other and their pros and cons. So if you guys just want to see the benchmark results, I have a link in or a timestamp in the description below. So just go ahead and click on that and it'll take you right to it. But let's take a look at some of these languages. So the first language that we have is GD script, GD script developed by the Godot team. You know, it's a fast development time. It's really easy to read. It's very simple to learn and it's fully supported by the Godot team. And 90% of the tutorials that you're going to see are going to be done through GD script. Now with all of that ease of use, you do lose out on some things. So one of the big cons for me, and I'm not saying this is a con for you, but not being type safe for me is a, is a con. Now, again, that's debatable. So don't take it as like gospel that if it's not type safe, it's a bad language by any means. But here are the two major struggles with it. It's much slower than other languages and it uses up more memory and more system resources because it's interpreting on the fly what you're trying to do with your code versus pre-compiling it and then running it later. Now, the next major language is Python. Python is supported by the community using the Thule Man Godot Python. Link is in the description below to go check out his GitHub. Go ahead and take a look at that. But here are some pros to it. It's much faster than GD script. It's really simple to use. You have all the libraries available to you that Python would have, and it's super easy to read. I mean, GD script and Python are basically the same in terms of how they look and how they operate. So you get a lot of that flexibility and a lot of those features that Python has that GD script doesn't have. Now onto some of the cons here for Python. There isn't a lot of documentation for how Godot interacts with Python. You know, you basically are kind of in the wild west where you have to figure out what you're trying to do. And that makes things really complicated. When I was trying to just get my basic bubble sort algorithm to work, hooking it up inside of Godot was kind of a pain because there's not a lot of documentation on how to do it. There is pretty much zero tutorials for this. So you're going to have to, like I said, it's, it's the wild west. You have to go and figure it out for yourself. And it is slower than C sharp and C plus plus. And finally, there's no Godot dev support. So if something goes wrong, you're not going to be able to talk to the devs about it. They'll say, it's not our problem. You'll have to go talk to Thule man and specifically ask him about the issue that you're having on to C sharp C sharp. It's developed by Microsoft and it's officially supported by the Godot developers. It's has faster performance. It's type safe, which for me is a big advantage. Now that being said, again, that's a subjective metric, but I like type safe languages. It's used in other engines such as Unity or CryEngine. Both of those engines have C Sharp as an available option to code in. And it has thousands of built-in libraries for development. Now on to cons, it's much more complex than GD script or Python. It has a much slower development time. Every time you want to test something, you need to run through a compiling cycle and let the system think and, and calculate how it's going to handle it in the most optimal way. There's very little support. You're not going to find any tutorials out there for C sharp. That's one of the reasons why I made this channel was to do C sharp development tutorials because there really isn't any out there. The Godot Tev team kind of treats uh, C Sharp as a second child. It doesn't really support it as much as GD script. So, you know, for instance, uh, Godot 4 right now doesn't really have a mono build available, at least 
at the time of this recording. That being said, I might have missed it, and that's a possibility, but as of right now, it doesn't have one because they're focusing on GDScript first. That being said, they are porting .NET 6, if I remember correctly, to Godot, which is going to be an awesome new feature for the C Sharp side of things. Now onto the next language, Rust. Rust is a really cool tool. It is handled by the Godot Rust team, which is an actual group of people that want Rust to be supported in Godot. The documentation is pretty good. Um, it's super easy to integrate with Godot. You literally, I mean, I have a tutorial that I just put out that shows you guys how to do it. It's very simple. It's basically two or three commands and you're off to the races syntax wise it's much simpler to c plus plus and it has its own package manager which is really cool and it's and cargo is an awesome package manager it does a lot of the work for you that you would have to do manually with c plus plus cargo's cons so there's almost zero community support there is you know 60 or so contributors to the rust community and there's not a lot of tutorials out there for it so that's something to keep in mind there's no godot dev support so if you ask a developer a question they're gonna tell you that it's not their problem and the syntax itself is pretty difficult for beginners so that's something to keep in mind moving over to nim the Godot NIM bindings is created by Prague Magic, which is a small group of people that are trying to bring NIM over to Godot. One of the big advantages for it is that it's a Python-like syntax. It's super easy to integrate it with Godot in the sense that compared to C++, where you have to deal with a lot of files and a lot of things, NIM is a lot simpler to deal with than what C++ would be, and it's faster than C Sharp, which is a pretty big advantage than some other languages out there. Now, some of the major cons of NIM is there is a very little community help in Godot and out of Godot. I was looking up an error when I was trying to do my bubble sort, and I legitimately couldn't find anybody that was having the same issue that I was having and nobody was giving me good answers. So it was really hard for me to debug my problem. And that wasn't just for Godot, but that was just NIM in general. It was literally just a small issue. It's quite a bit more complicated than alternatives. You know, you have to have stub files and Nake files and you have to deal with a compiler and like compared to Rust where Rust it's literally just build this thing and throw it over and you're pretty much done. Nim has a lot more setup that goes with it, but once you have it set up, it's pretty good and it's pretty easy to work with, but it's just something to keep in mind. There are very few developers. When we're talking third-party implementations, it's one of the lesser developed ones out of their group. You know, if I was going to pick a third-party one, Based off of developers alone, it would be probably Rust since it has the most amount of developers. And the last major one is it's not officially supported by the Godot team. So if you run into a problem, they're not going to help you because it's not their problem. Now on to C++. So C++ is supported directly by the Godot devs. It's one of the fastest languages that you can have, and it integrates directly with the Godot engine. So you're able to access the meat of Godot and directly interact with its parts. You want to change how the Vulkan renderer works, you can actually do that with C++. And you gain the ability to use any C++ library in existence, which is awesome. And one of the biggest benefits of C++ is it's used in pretty much every game engine. Not all game engines, but mostly all game engines have C++ as its core component. You know, you look at Unreal or Unity or CryEngine, which are three of the major game engines out there, at least in the 3D side, they all have C++ backing that language. 
So it's a really powerful language and it has a long history of being the industry standard. Now for C++ cons, it's very slow development time. So you need to compile your module, you need to set up your um, linking file and you need to set up your GD native file and then you can go ahead and do it. I actually have a tutorial on this link is in the description. It's kind of a pain in the butt to put together. It's really easy to code yourself in a corner. You have a lot of freedom, you know, and I know large amounts of freedom might be a problem, but one of the big struggles that you can run into is you can actually code yourself into a corner. You can, you know, change how you manage memory and then have it crash your game and crash your system. So that's just something to keep in mind is that you have to know what you're doing if you're going to mess with C++. Now, that being said, Godot has been pretty good about keeping you in kind of a sandbox to help you out, but it is very easy to code yourself into a corner if you don't know what you're doing. So what do they look like? Well, GD script looks basically like Python and I don't have Python up here. It's in the next slide, but I mean, GD script here, it's very easy to read. You can actually see how easy it is to read. C sharp, you can see how it reads. It reads very much like C++, but it's slightly less complicated. And then you have C++, which is a little bit more complicated. You know, you can look at it, you can see how we have to call our class here. And then we have to call our function here. And you can see how that works. You can see we have some memory pointers and stuff like that, which makes it a little bit more complicated. So that's something to keep in mind. And continuing, what do they look like? Here's what Python and Rust doing a bubble sort algorithm looks like so you can see kind of how they do it you can see that with python you almost have two giant extremes python which kind of holds your hand and helps you through a lot of the stuff and rust where it gives you bare metal access and allows you to create an extremely efficient bubble sort algorithm and lastly, we have NIM over here, which kind of tries to strike a balance between Python and Rust. And as you can see, it, it does. It looks very similar to Python in terms of how it's put together, which is really cool. Whereas Rust, it seems really complicated. NIM helps strike the balance between the two, which is a really cool feature of NIM. So next, I wanted to benchmark them and come up with some kind of standard way to determine what was the fastest language. And this is a bad metric. So for anybody who cares, it's not a great metric to choose a language, but it is something that matters when you're building a AI or a level generator or something like that. Your language choice might matter. The speed might matter. So I came up with a 10,000 item bubble sort to, to try to see what was the fastest language because it requires you to translate data between arrays and do a lot of for looping and things like that. So I felt like it was an okay way to determine what language was faster than other languages. So if we take a look at that, you can see here GD script being the slowest by a lot over here with about 24 seconds to run a 10,000 object bubble sort. Python comes in second at about nine seconds. And since GD script and Python are basically the same language, it's really kind of amazing to see how much slower GD script is compared to Python. And we'll have to take a look at this for GD script 3.0 and see if maybe there's some improvement. But as of right now, Python is way faster, even though they're both interpreted languages, which is crazy. C sharp is in third at this point. Well, third in terms of being the slowest, uh, at three seconds, you know, C sharp tries to strike a balance between, uh, Python and C plus plus and GD script. And it kind of does. And you can see in the benchmark results, it really does. NIM is in fourth with about one second or so. And you know, with the Python syntax, it's kind of cool because you have a Python syntax like language that is very quick. 
And then you have C++, which is the official supported language of Godot. And this is native script. So that's really cool. You know, it's, it's, you know, 256 milliseconds, which is practically nothing. So really, if you're going to build something that's super efficient, C++ is a pretty good option. And then last but not least, definitely is Rust. And Rust is the fastest, which surprised me. I expected C Sharp to win this handedly and it didn't it actually lost to rust and i was very surprised with uh an average time of about what 240 milliseconds we'll say 245 milliseconds and i mean that's insanely quick so that's some of your results here for this and really it's it's quite cool so now the question is is there a best language and the answer is no all languages are good they just have different use cases you know rust is best for speed but it can be complicated and it has pretty much zero support for the devs c is almost the best for speed and you know it's supported by the devs but it's a pain in the butt to use and this is supposed to change for uh godot 4 and i know that they just put out a article about that so i've been looking into that and seeing how it's changed and Python is great for usability, but it's not super quick and it's unsupported by devs. And the GD script is great for usability, but it's really poor for speed. And C Sharp tries to strike a balance between all of them. And I think it does. I think it does a pretty good job, which I think I said that in the previous video as well, but it, it really does strike a decent balance between the languages. And then, of course, last but certainly not least is NIM, which is a good language if you like the Python syntax and want almost C++ speed. So what do you guys think? Do you think that there is a best language for Godot? Or do you think that there's just different languages for different use cases? Do you guys think that GD script is the perfect language for everyone to use? Or do you think that... C++ is the best language. Let me know in the comments below. I'd be more than happy to chat with you guys about it. But that's really all I have for you guys today. So if you like this video, hit that like button. Hey, you know, if you dislike this video, go ahead and hit that dislike button because I am here to make content for you guys. This video was a viewer suggestion. So if you guys have any viewer suggestions, let me know in the comments below and I'd be more than happy to get to them and to create the videos that you guys want and if you have any questions or you guys just want to yell at me you can throw them in the comments below or hey jump on our discord we got some really cool guys out there link is in the description and we'd love to hang out with you guys and help you guys out with your games and your problems but that's all i have for you guys today so thank you so much again for watching and i will see you all next time thanks